sensational. Hello and welcome to the AO Countdown for another week. I've got the great Adrian Franklin alongside me. Nice to see you, Adrian. Thank you very much for having me, Brett. Good to be here. Yeah, different sort of role for you this week. Yeah, a little bit more serious. He's suited up, but it's just starting to feel like the Australian Open now. We've got uh, people shifting in left, right and centre. Absolutely, Brett. We can clearly see that the broadcast compound is being built right for the situs. Getting closer to January, which is very exciting. Yeah, January 17, it is getting closer and closer. Stay with us. We've got another big edition of the AO Countdown coming your way. Coming up today, the countdown continues to Australian Open 2011. We go one-on-one -on -one with tournament director Craig Tiley. Sam Stoza talks about her preparation for the summer of tennis. Vera Zonareva moves into contention for her first Grand Slam title. Plus, we unveil the entertainment lineup for Grand Slam Open. All that and more coming up on the Australian Open countdown. Great, great to see you. Craig, likewise. That time of the year again. It is, huh? have a seat. Well, Craig, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, traditionally, we do get very good fields for the Australian Open, but there has been some significant news that Serena Williams, defending champion, five-time Australian Open winner, unfortunately, is not going to be here at Melbourne Park. Well, we are certainly disappointed for Serena. She would love nothing more than to defend her title. We know she particularly likes Melbourne and the Australian Open, but uh, she's had, had to unfortunately withdraw. The recovery of her foot hasn't been as quick as she would like. She's still in the boot and uh, is expecting to get out of that at some point in the month of December and then be ready to compete in February or March. Well, we go back to last year's Australian Open and unfortunately Rafael Nadal got knocked out by Andy Murray in a, in a great match and went down injured. Since then he's had an outstanding year winning three majors and Roger wants to get that number one ranking back. That rivalry looks like it's really going to intensify further in uh, January next year. Well it certainly has gone back and forth the last two years and if you the year before if we can recall it was rougher that one and uh, Roger that was the it was disappointed and uh, and then the rest of the year Roger went on and had a fantastic year. This year was Roger that one and uh, and Ruff has gone on and had a fantastic year and this could be uh, Ruff's fourth consecutive Grand Slam win if he was to do that. It's been a long time since that's happened. So the rivalry between those two just heightens the level of interest. So I'm particularly looking forward to not only all the players coming down, but particularly looking forward to the potential of that matchup again. The 1975 Australian Open final pitted John Newcomb, Australia's local hero, against Jimmy Connors, the world's number one, who was defending his 1974 crown. The Australian veteran claimed the first set 7-5, but Connors, who had just won the US Open and Wimbledon, battled back to level the tie under sweltering conditions on the grass at Kuyong. Connors was the favourite, but it was Newcomb, the Australian champion in 73, who gained the upper hand and won the third set 6-4. Roared on by the partisan crowd, the veteran Australian, with six slams already to his name, defeated an irritable Connors 7-5-3-6-6-4-7-5. It was Newcomb's seventh and final Grand Slam victory and the last time Connors would grace the courts at the Australian Open. In tennis news this week, Roger Federer ended the year in fine style, taking out the ATP World Tour Finals title in London. The Swiss master beat close rival Rafael Nadal in the title match, setting up a perfect platform ahead of his Australian Open title defence in January. The Australian Open Trophy Tour continued its charge across the country, visiting Canberra, Brisbane, the Gold Coast and Rockhampton. A veteran of the tour, Kamiko Date Crum, announced that 2011 will be the final season of her career. And the summer of tennis really does kick off this week with the Bendigo International here in Victoria. Players such as Alicia Mollick and Yamila Groff participating. You can watch live streaming at tennis.com.au. They drink great field and while those players are preparing for Bendigo, Samantha Stoza now starts her preparations for Australian Open 2011. I start training next week so this is my last week off where I can do whatever I want and um, yeah, not have to worry about anything so I've had you know, a couple of good years here, made the fourth round a couple of times and um, now I'm going to be coming into the tournament the highest ranked I've ever been so hopefully that's a, a good thing for me and I can get even further than a fourth round like I did, like I did in 2010 so um, you know, I never want to say there's more pressure because it really at the end of the day it's more support and I know that you know, most people in the seats watching me uh, want me to win and are willing me on to win so uh, that's a great feeling I'd much rather have 15,000 people for me than against me that's for sure and um, I really enjoy playing here so hopefully uh, you know, put all that together and I find some good form and I can be here for, for the whole two weeks. 
Well, back to the women's side of the draw as we take a look at the Australian Open contenders for 2011. And today we focus on world number two, Vera Zonareva. Adrian, what an amazing year she's had outside the top 20 coming into Wimbledon and making the final and she's kicked on from there. Absolutely, and on the back of that Wimbledon result reaching the US Open final, unfortunately not being able to crack a victory, this January, if she gets a good result, she could potentially be world number one. Just maybe, Vera Zonareva is getting closer to that Grand Slam breakthrough, and it could happen here at the Australian Open in 2011. She's, she's come of age in the, in the last couple of tournaments, especially in, in the Grand Slams. She made the final at the US Open. She also made the final at Wimbledon. And I think with a, with a new mental attitude that she's brought to the court, her game has improved tenfold and she is a very big chance to take it all the way here at Melbourne Park. It's just whether she's going to get past someone like a Kim Kleisters or a Justine Hennon and that's going to be the big uh, decisive factor for her and if she does that she is going to be a Grand Slam champion. So, we know about the tennis at the Australian Open, but what else have we got? Well, there's the summer weather, the party atmosphere, and some phenomenal live music. Whether you're into jazz, indie rock, soul, or funk, the Heineken Live Stage at Grand Slam Oval will have something for everyone. Concerts will be open to all Australian Open spectators, and the $29 ground pass will be music to everyone's ears. Get it? Music? Ears? In 2011, feast your eyes and ears on artists such as Claire Bowditch, Stone Mason, Daryl Braithwaite, Mark Seymour, Tim Rogers and Amy Merritt. So bring your dancing shoes and rock out on Grand Slam Oval at Australian Open 2011. Well Adrian, great to have had you part of the show. A genuine or Randy, but all of it covered. It's certainly been different, but a lot of fun. Please send us your feedback on our Facebook page or send us a tweet. The AO countdown is nearly halfway through and the excitement is building. It is building for sure. From Brett Phillips and Adrian Franklin, thank you for joining us once again on the AO countdown.